Hello, hi everybody. I am Thekla Petridou, a psychologist, YouTuber and author. Today it's Friday the 5th of February 2021 and this is our weekly video blog aka vlog in English. Today's subject is about romantic relationships and I'm trying to answer a question which was posed to me by one of our viewers. How do we build a strong and long-lasting relationship. Nowadays, uh, being in a serious, committed, loving, strong and long-lasting relationship, romantic relationship, is not as easy as we thought it was a couple of decades ago. Times are changing. Um, I come from Cyprus, which is a very small Mediterranean country, and most of my viewers are Greeks who come from Greece, which is a slightly bigger uh, European country. Greece's population is around 10-11 million people. Um, we have our own culture and our own tradition as every nation. Um, I'm a Greek Cypriot. I'm from Cyprus, but I have Greek roots, Greek origins, and my mother tongue is Greek. And our uh, Greek family and society are pretty uh, unique, as every family and society. Um, I listen uh, and uh, read very often on the emails I receive uh, from several uh, Greek viewers that our society has been rotten, that uh, romantic love does not exist, that people are not being monogamic anymore, and that the traditional values of love, romance and family are being gone or vanished. I will start with this. I have a strong belief that um, we are going towards a postmodern era in our society, whereas some basic humanitarian values will make a very big comeback. This has also already been observed in some Western societies, as in some United some states of uh, the United States of America, in some Western countries as. Um, Oh, I would say Denmark, Norway, Holland maybe, um, countries that uh, have had a civil society for more years than us because um, Greece has been liberated, liberated from uh, um, Ottoman um, Empire only a hundred years ago, 200 years ago. Um, the Greek Revolution started uh, 200 years ago, on 1821. Cyprus has been an independent state and liberated from the British occupancy uh, in 1960, which is uh, slightly more, slightly above uh, um, 60 years of uh, independence. 60 turbulent years. So all these historic um, circumstances and instances have played a huge role and a they have a huge impact on Greek and Cypriot society so that uh, we do not progress as fast in a microsocial way, in a microsocial way, in a macrosocial way. Um, in during uh, the 70s, 1968 in, in France, 1969 in Woodstock in, in the US, there was been a sexual liberation uh, um, movement um, which was characterized as a modern movement of uh, living the modern life, of um, um, leaving behind traditional family values and uh, having uh, the so-called sexual liberation. This was, the, this was the modern times, but now in these societies that uh, modernity was invented, they come uh, to a stage where they are in the postmodern era, whereas uh, humanitarian values and some of the traditional values return 
because people um, are um, requesting for a more um, fulfilling and rewarding emotional life. I am a monogamist. I come from a monogamist tradition and most of my viewers are. I know that some of our viewers are polygamous or polyamorous, but this video is mostly intended for the monogamist ones. Even though lately I've been conversing with some people who come from the polyamorous uh, movement and uh, talking with them, with them has given me the impression that what I'm about to say right now can be also applied in those um, specific circumstance, circumstances or life choices. In order to be able to build a strong and long-lasting romantic relationship, the, the number one prerequisite is to have already established a strong, long-lasting relationship with yourself. Loving ourselves, appreciating ourselves, having high self-esteem is a prerequisite for any loving relationship. Even Jesus Christ said in the Bible, love, the, love thy brother as yourself. Love the other person in your life the same way you love yourself. So loving yourself is a prerequisite for being able to love anybody else. Loving yourself does not mean being selfish or being a narcissist. Loving yourself means to have a good relationship with yourself, to accept yourself the way you are, to accept your um, uh, virtues and your uh, bad characteristics, to be in a loving relationship with yourself, encourage yourself to become a better person, encourage to yourself to become a better version of, your, of yourself, and being like a loving internal mother to yourself. This is not easy to achieve. Some people are lucky enough to have been born in loving families with emotionally intelligent parents, uh, mature enough in order to be parents of their children, that gave their children the self-esteem and the love self that they needed in order to become whole individuals. But for those that were born in um, difficult family situations, uh, children that had an abusive childhood, children that were neglected during their childhood, or they were over-reprimanded, tend to have a bad relationship with themselves. And having a bad relationship with yourself does not help you to have a good relationship with anybody else. If you find yourself loathing yourself, if you find yourself full of self-pity with yourself, do yourself a favor, give yourself a present, and please go to therapy. Therapy is the only way to help you uh, renovate, heal your relationship with yourself. So in order to build a strong and long-lasting relationship with somebody else, you need to love yourself first. Second prerequisite is to know who you are and know what you really, really want from a relationship. If you don't know what your needs are and your expectations are and your desires are, you will never find it. You will never find that person that is suitable for you. You need to be able to distinguish what's important for you in a possible match, a romantic match. Do you care about external appearances? Do you care about educational level? Do you care about financial status? Do you care about spirituality? Do you care about integrity? Do you care about humanitarian values? Do you care about communication? What do you really care about? What is the most important characteristics that you require that a person has in order to be in a loving relationship with, in a romantic relationship with? Ask yourselves, what do you really want? And what type of relationship you really wish to have or you are able to have? Are you, able, are you really able to have a long-lasting 
serious, serious committed relationship, seriously committed relationship. Are you able to do that? Are, do you have the time and energy or even money to invest in building a new relationship? Or are you tired from life? Are you at a point in your life that you work too much and you have many things to worry you and all you care about is to have some pleasant moment with somebody that you fancy? Some people are in a place in their life that they really don't have the time and they don't have the luxury of um, maintain, building, acquiring and maintaining a loving relationship, of course. Sometimes there is this uh, self-sabotage thing. Some people might have all the time in the world, might be in great need of having something really, really, really valuable in their life, like a true love relationship, but they self-sabotage themselves and they sabotage their relationships by telling themselves that, oh, I'm in a bad place in my life right now, oh, I have some health issues, oh, I have some financial issues, oh, the world is going through a pandemic, oh, life is difficult, I cannot do that. So, beware of self sabotage because most of us that we are born and raised in human families, we have come to consider being happy, something extraordinary, something that we might not really deserve. What does your childhood, what has your childhood taught you about yourself? Do you really deserve love? Do you deserve to be loved? Do you deserve happiness? Or have you had a rather difficult life and your parents, your educators, society around you gave you the impression that you do not deserve happiness, you do not deserve love, you are not worthy to be loved. Again, if this is the case, therapy will help you to overcome these false beliefs that sabotage your love life. Another prerequisite for building and maintaining a strong, ever long-lasting, not everlasting, nobody knows however. <laughs> I think that in, in our era, we, never, we are not allowed to say everlasting, long-lasting relationship, is to uh, know exactly uh, what you want to do with your life. Not especially your love life, but to have this uh, self-knowledge um, of who you are, where you are, and what you are able to do. Know your situation. Know your motives. Know your limits. Some people say the sky is the limit. In order to say that, you need to be tall enough, brave enough, and um, realistic enough to be able to fight for what you really want and to be able to try it. I do believe that most of us deserve more than what we allow ourselves to have in our love life and in other aspects of our lives, of course, but especially this video is about our love life. I know and I really believe that most people are afraid of loneliness, are afraid of being left alone, to grow up without having a partner, or without having a husband or a wife or I don't know what a lover and they compromise and stay in relationships that are not the best possible option for them. Not everybody is a good match for us and we are not a good match for everybody. A good match, according to my opinion as a psychologist, is someone who shares characteristics, personality traits with us who shares a belief system similar to ours, who share humanitarian and family values. You need to have some uh, acceptance and some uh, communication as some common field in what you really want from life, what you really appreciate in life, and what a good relationship is for you. And 
Ask this question to yourself and your prospective partner. What does a good relationship mean for you? If you answer the question in similar ways, this is a clue that you might be compatible. And lastly, in order to build and maintain a long-lasting relationship, you need to be patient, patient, to allow yourself time and your relationship time to breathe and be tested in several different occasions. The first three months of a relationship are very intense and there are a lot of hormones involved. So your brain is not so clear. You cannot see very clearly where you are and what you are up to. You can obviously enjoy it and live it and live in the moment, but give yourself time in order to make a decision whether this is a relationship that is long lasting for you or that it is a, or even if it's a, or if it's a trial and error thing. Nobody knows from the beginning. But if you don't allow yourself to leave it, you will never know. And I close this video by saying, by, by talking about some red flags that should alert us and make us um, discontinue a new relationship. Violence. Physical violence, sexual violence, and psychological violence are um, things, things are, are red flags in order to stop a relationship with a person who violates us in such a way. Another red flag is addiction. If you meet somebody who's addicted to drugs, is addicted to gambling, is addicted to anything, this is a huge red flag and it makes it uh, really difficult to maintain a healthy relationship with someone. Another red flag is codependency. If you meet somebody that they don't have their own, um, their own uh, mind and they don't have their own opinions and they say yes to everything you ask them, be worried. It's a red flag. If someone never disagrees with you, if someone tells you always, oh, you are the best, you are the best boyfriend ever, you are the best girlfriend ever, oh, you're so beautiful, oh, you're excellent, yes, I will do what you say, yes to this, yes to that, be careful, that person might be a people pleaser, or that person might be a con artist who wants to make you like him or make you like her in order to obtain something from you. Real people have real relationships with difficulties, with quarrels, with um, disagreements, with happy moments, sad moments. But above all, the most important connecting tissue and glue that keeps two people together is communication. Clear, candid communication. Communicate your feelings with each other. Communicate your ideas. Communicate with your opinions and try use this valuable tool of communication in order to get to know each other better and test your relationship. I wish to all of you that you are single and you you wish to have uh, to build, acquire, build and maintain a strong and long lasting relationship to have the patience and the energy in order to uh, make this a reality. Uh, in another video, uh, maybe next week, we could talk about how to use um, dating sites on the internet um, in a way that will help you to narrow down, ra narrow down the candidates that might be suitable to form a romantic relationship with you. That's a tricky issue. Next Friday. See you. Have a lovely weekend, everybody. Bye.